Well, today's episode is going to be a little different today. Now, in the last episode, I normally have New Japan Strong, but however, I didn't get the chance to see it completely because um, something was a little off with the new, new NJP W on demand. I don't know why they haven't put it completely on rest, in, uh, WatchProWrestling.org, but I was able to see it. I saw the latest New Japan Strong with a uh, uh, collision course in Philadelphia, also known as the United Empire Rising. But we're also going to review Choco Pro 242, New, uh, New Japan with uh, New Japan Road, and of course, a much recent event by GCW DOA, or as it stands for, Dead on Arrival. And of course, we got some several news updates that we're going to share what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling. So, let's get started with another episode of the Leader Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay, right here. So let's begin with New Japan Strong with Collision in Philadelphia, or has been known as United Empire Rising. Yes, folks, the entire most of the members of United Empire are involved in this particular match. Our event. So basically, we'll see who if they can pull up all wins. Our first match is an eight-man tag match. We have, of course, TMDK, consistent of Bad Dude Tito, Shane Haste, Mikey Nichols, and Jonah, versus the United Empire, Mark Davis, Kyle Fletcher, also known as Ozzy Open, Aaron Hanare, and Great O'Conn. Now keep in mind, this was a match from a long while back, as you know the. TMDK beat the United Empire, which is a huge blow to the United Empire regardless. So this time, the answer is, can the United Empire overcome that particular loss that took place? That's an obvious question. Now, keep in mind, United Empire has been playing as the most dominant force anyway. As you know, recently we did saw Khan and Cobb become tag team champions, but unfortunately those titles are lost. But... As you know, they're trying to control, believing that New, uh, United Empire should be the ones running New Japan Strong. Because, as you know, Will's Osprey saying, the dojo cannot be the ones controlling it. But, however, I have to say, they put uh, the TMDK put up a good fight. But, however, it was Hanare who somehow pulled off the biggest miracle to win the match. Setting one for one to, of course, United Empire. Now, our next match, we have two powerhouses. We got Willie Mack versus Jeff Cobb. Now, I've been a fan of Willie Mack for a long time. I even saw him in person several years ago during the Rey Mysterio one, um, Lucha Wonder land. I think that's what it was. But he was cool. I think he was in a unique wrestler, and I liked his, his um, charisma and all that stuff. And I have to say, he did pull off great, but unfortunately, he did not walk out with the victor. As you know, as... Jeff Cobb being the most powerful person on the planet. He actually put him in the tour of the islands, and that it's it. So good night, Willie Mack. Now, this next match, our main event is Homicide versus Will Ospreay. Now, keep in mind, Will Ospreay put himself in this match against one of the most dangerous wrestlers ever. You know Homicide, what he can do, the kind of weapons he brings. And, of course, Will Ospreay is always thirsty for the best wrestlers there is. So that kind of puts it in a perspective. However, Homicide wasn't there alone. So was the Mad King himself, Eddie Kingston, there too. But however, apparently Will Ospreay decided to poke the bear and piss off Kingston. Now, as you know, Will Ospreay has the tendency to piss off people or trying to get under their skin to get them to fight. However, Homicide did try to pull off the fork, but it didn't do so well until 
finally, um, Will Ospreay pried the Stormbreaker. It's over. It was done. So giving him the advantage. But it looks more like he wants a piece of Eddie Kingston. Now, I wouldn't be surprised in this kind of fashion that John Mox, I mean, that Will Ospreay will send a message to John Moxley because he believes that match that he had with Moxley was a load of crap. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. So we'll find out in the future what's been taking place. But uh, that's pretty much it. So I believe it's time to move on to our next review, which is Choco Pro 242. Choco Pro 242, as you know, day two since we haven't seen Emi Sakura. No audiences today. However, the, um, May Shruga was opening the show, and apparently she was not the person who was going to open the show. It's none other than, whoa, 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 bad communications. That's right, Kanoka was there. And now, there was no translation to what he was saying. Now, even though Balinaki was there, I wish he could have translated what was going on, but did not. But however, his little speech was interrupted by Yuna Mizumori. It looks like there's still some unresolved issues regarding either matches. I don't know, but <laughs> it didn't go so well, but we'll see. <coughs> now, our opening match, we have Shin Suzuki, who replaced Sayuri, who wasn't feeling too well. But uh, good news, Sayuri says she's doing fine. She's getting great. She's helpful that the um, supporters and friends reached out to her, seeing how she was doing. So she's fine. But however, Shin Suzuki, as you know, this is, uh, we're not too far off when Shin Suzuki was already in a, a title match against Balinaki. Now, Balinaki, he's not too bothered by it. But I think he kind of questions, like, how many times they have to go through this. But he said... Not too bothered. He's he's willing to challenge me anytime he wants. But the match was pretty good. But however, if you guys been aware recently, Got to Move slash Choco Pro have been now been invaded once again by U the Uma Army. If you guys remember, not too long ago, we did saw Kapokozo attack Meshruga. And then it, him and another Kappa showed up again at the Meishiruga 4th year anniversary. There were two of them. And now this time during the match, we have G, Tiger Jeet, for can't, can't pronounce the rest of the name, showed up too. It's still unclear what is Uma really up to. We don't know what their plan is or what they're trying to gain. However, Balinaki, as you know, he'll be gone for two months after starting on July 11th. <clears throat> but he did say a direct message to Uma that once he returns, he will dealt with them. So this is going to be one of those uh, moments where, of course, we'll see how that turns out. Because there's no question in my mind if the idea what Uma is trying to do is obtain the titles. They already tried the, the Asian Dream Tag Team titles, but they failed. It's possible they could be targeting the Super Asia title. I don't know. We'll find out. In our last match, we have too much energy. Koshikawa once again teaming up with her frenemy, as we call it, Mei Shuruga, to take on Tokiko Kihara and Yuna Mizumori. Now, I'm, there are times we've seen Chi and Mei can get along great because those two are nuts. As you guys, you know, um, Balinaki calls them psychos because the way they act, the way they behave, they're almost similar in every aspect. Now, you could say that could be helpful in their mind. But, however, when it comes to Yuna Mizumori, you know that she's a powerhouse that she's willing to put. But Shiko Shikawa suffered the fate when she got pancaked by Yuna Mizumori in order to win the match, giving her and Tokiko the win. Now, for Unjunkin Tournament, just to make a note here, uh, Balanaki did not participate in the Junkin Tournament. Um, they find out he actually had to be somewhere else. Not wrestling, but commentary. Uh, but I'm assuming that he might have asked Sayaka Obihiro to take his spot in the Jonkin tournament. So she was there. But on a note, she did not make it all the way. Neither did Mei. Neither did Tokiko. But the ones who made it all the way to the end was, of course, Shin Suzuki 
and Chico Shikawa. I'm like, this is going to be good. And for the second time in, in Shin Suzuki's life, he picked up the victory, getting, getting himself the chocolate. So I have to say it was pretty good. I like it. So I don't know how next week is going to be before Balinaki leaves, but I can't wait to see it. So I think that's pretty much it. So let's move on with New Japan Road. Okay, so let's talk about New Japan Road. I think this is day six, if I'm not wrong. Then someone slapped me in the back of the head. So anyway, this one was one of the latest New Japan uh, events that took place on the 3rd of July. Um, we opened up with Rohi Oiwa and Tiger Mask taking on a great uh, Bash heel, you know, between uh, with... Uh, Hamna and Makabe. Now, I wasn't too much pumped on this one because I figured it would end in GBH's favor. The reason this because Rohi Oiwa is the young line. On rare occasions, we've seen the young lines win, but only if they're uh, seniors, they're the veterans who are teaching them win the match. But unfortunately, Rohi Oiwa ended up in the Boston Crab by Hamna. As you know, recently we've been seeing a lot of those wrestlers, especially the Young Lions, end up in that position. Next up, we got Suzuki Goon, consistent of Kanemaru, Despi, and Minoru Suzuki, taking on Kose Fujita, Master Wato, and Hiro Hiroyoshi Tenzan. Now, you know this is th those kind of matches where it ends badly, especially when it comes to guys like Fujita. i seen young lines in the past they try to stand up and try to act like they think they could be in the same kind of level as Minoru Suzuki however Fujita ended up in the wrong side of the gauch stotch pile driver and it was over I mean great effort but not enough now we have the United Empire consistent of Aaron Hinare and the great Okan taking on uh, LIJ's junior heavyweights, uh, Bushi and Hiramu. Now, you could say that we have seen on certain occasions certain junior heavyweights can withstand wrestlers who are in the heavyweights, like Hiramu, who took out uh, Evil once before. That was a very big one. But, however, in this case, Aaron Hinare was the one who pulled the full Nelson lock on Bushi, forcing him to tap out. But once again, he refuses to prove his dominance. But, one way or another, someone's going to get him back. <laughs> now, our next match, we have, of course, the DKC. Clark Connors teaming up with Blue Justice. Yuji Nagata to take on all three members of the heavyweights of the uh, <clears throat> LIJ. Sonata, Shingo Tagagi, and, of course, Tetsuya Naito. So, this one was a pretty interesting because the thing is, when it comes to Clark Connors, he's always the toughest SOP to try to beat. However, it did not go well for that because it ended in favor of Sonata with the skull end on DKC and it was over right from there. Next up, chaos between uh, with Toriyano and Bushimon, Yoshiashi and Yoki Goto taking on the members of of what? Oh yeah, uh, House of Torture between um, Dick Togo, Yujiro Takahashi and Evil Now. In recent time, we have witnessed how Yano put um, Dick Togo in a dog cage. It looks like they're building up a feud between those two. Now, I don't know exactly if we are going to have a definite singles um, match between them. But, however, the match turned when, of course, out of nowhere, Effin Show shows up with that wrench, making sure that House of Torture walks out. But, unfortunately... <sighs> Toriano ended up in the wrong side of, his, uh, on, of a cage again, I think. But yeah. Now our next match, we have the other members of Suzuki Goon, um, Takamichinuku and Taichi, taking on Chaos's Toruyano and um, what's his name, Kaguchika Okada. Now you, this was not too much of a big story if you guys mean it, but uh, it was Okada who walked out as victor. When he applied the money clip onto Taka Michinuku. 
Now, our next match is a very interesting. We have Alex Zane, Kushida, and um, Hiroshi Tanahashi making their debut. I mean, uh, as you know, K Kushida makes his return to New Japan, taking on Bullet Club's Ghetto, Taiji Shimuri, and Kenta. Now, keep in mind, Kenta hasn't forgotten that it, the injury he got from Tanahashi when he was IWGP United States Heavyweight Champion. But he did consider that title a curse for what he went through. So basically, it's like he will never forget that. But as for Kushida, as you know, he made his presence known, as you know, when he defeated uh, Hiromu to retain the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Now, it's still unclear whether Kushida will be going for that title or not. Because there was uh, talk that he was thinking about transitioning from junior heavyweight to heavyweight. But it was a pretty good match. And not to mention uh, Alex Zane, who has made a good impression in New Japan since arriving for the best of Super Junior. It was pretty amazing to see that from him. So, uh, it was awesome. But however, it was Kushida who picked up a huge victory winning the match. So basically, what a great way for a win for his return so <coughs> so uh that's pretty much it but there is more to new japan road i will review that as soon as i can but right now let's move on to our last review which is gcw dead on arrival okay our final review is GCW's Dead on Arrival. This one was recently on June 30th. Now, I did not completely see this. This is one of two of four events they're taking on from the 4th of July weekend. So, basically, I will be catching up on those events as soon as possible. Now, our opening match is a five-way scramble match. We have Alex Pri Alec Price versus Yoya versus Tony Deppin versus Dark Sheik versus Jimmy Lloyd. Now, in scramble matches, we all know anything could happen. Things could be surprising. Now, some of you probably question who could walk out. I mean, for me, I would have uh, put my money on Dark Sheik because, you know, she's awesome. I love, love Dark Sheik. But, however, I think the last person I didn't think was going to be was Tony Deppin, who always finds a way to get out of this. He, had the, um, he picked up the victory. I think he was pinning Dark Sheik, which was like, oh, man, that's messed up. But you know, Tony Deppin, like they say in the commentary section, he's a complete a-hole. So I thought it makes more sense that he wins it. Now our next match, this was a very <coughs> interesting, unique match. I never heard of this guy named Chase Burnett. He acts, he walks out in a cane like he's an old man who is about to break his back, taking on Graveheart himself, Blake Christian. Now, I thought the match was pretty in interesting because, you know, I've seen something like this similar, but not into a funny extent, more of a comedic. I've seen that in Japan. I forgot there was this one character they had where he's an old, he has like a mask of an old man and, you know, he takes a sweet time, that sort of thing. But that was nothing compared to that. But um, I thought it was kind of interesting because this guy had a much faster pace than normal. But, unfortunately, it was uh, uh, Blake Christian that walked out as a victor. <sighs> Excuse me? But, yeah, I wasn't too much pumped on that, but yeah. Now, our next match, and this one was a very interesting one for me. Reason is, we have Ninja Mac versus Calvin Tankman. Now, the reason I say this, these two guys are two of the most amazing wrestlers I have watched. You know, Ninja Mac very athletic um calvin tankman he is a powerhouse so that kind of shows us you know the difference but the obvious question does remain who will walk out now you can say this is a battle of david versus goliath like no this is the 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 power between speed and power that's how it is to me but i would have assumed in certain ways then Calvin Tankman being a powerhouse was going to walk out. No, it did not. I was surprised Ninja Mac walked out as the victor. I was like, wow. 
I have to say because the thing is, Ninja Mac has become a household name, not only in the independent scenes, but also in Japan. But yeah. Now our next match we have is a three-way Nick Wayne versus Jordan Oliver versus Alex Shelley. Now, in this case, we have seen moments like this when it's like a three-way Dobie's alliance is set up. Now, Nick Wayne and Jordan Oliver have become good friends. So, however, they tried to take out um, Alex Shelley to keep the match only strictly to them. But <coughs> it didn't. But I have to say it was a pretty good match because, you know, no matter what it, it, the outcome is, it's going to be a good one. But somehow what I saw is um, Jordan Oliver uh, gave a cutter to Nick Wayne at the end. And then, of course, he pinned Alex Shelley. He must have taken him out sooner, giving him the win. I'm like, wow. So I thought it was pretty good. It was a pretty good match. Really fun. Now, our next one. This one is one of the most extreme matches we ever seen. We have Team Horror Slam, consistent of Brayer Wellington, Malcolm Monroe 3, and Tony Vendetta taking on Second Gear Crew. One called Manders, uh, Matthew Justice, and of course the Southern Psycho, Mans Warner. Now this particular match, you know this is going to be balls to the walls. Because Second Gear Crew, they're always ready for, for battle. That's what I like about them. They know they are up to, they all are willing to put everything out. So, <laughs> I don't know if Team Horror Slam were prepared because... I have seen firsthand every time I watch GCW how these guys are. But unfortunately, it ended with, uh, of course, um, Manders putting um, two guys through a door. And then, of course, he gave Matthew just the ability to pull up a frog slash. Then both men covered one guy, giving them a good victory. That's what I like about it. Now, our next two matches are, in fact, death matches. Now, our first one here. We have Hoodfoot versus Slade. Now, I thought this match was going to be interesting, but unfortunately, the ref had to call the match because uh, there was too much bleeding with uh, Hoodfoot. Uh, if you guys know this, if there's too much blood coming out, uh, if you if you know in death matches it can be dangerous, but if you caught a major artery, the match has to, and an artery you have to stop. Because they don't want the wrestlers to die. So basically Slade won the match. So that's how it ends. However our next one we got Shane Mercer versus Akira. I thought this match was going to be interesting. Because Akira is one of the most um, amazing death match wrestlers I have watched of late. However Shane Mercer he is a beast. You know how that goes with him. But I was like surprised that he can actually. Everything that Akira threw at him just went out in flame but however uh mercer picked up and did like a somewhat a uh spanish fly onto uh kira allowing himself to win the match now our next match is another like another death match but in three way we have cole roderick taking on cyclope versus miedo extremo now this is one of those crazy matches you know this is something, as you know, Cole Roderick has made his presence known in death matches and recently. But I wasn't sure how this one was going to end. But Cyclop was the one who picked up the victory, and it was a good one. So, yeah. So, I think this was a pretty good event. So, I can't wait to review the other ones coming up. But I believe right now, I think it's time to end it right here and move on to our last thing, which is news updates. Okay, so we only got two news, uh, two updates here that I want to uh, talk about. Uh, Tokyo Shi Pro, as you know, we're having on July 9th, this coming Friday or Saturday. Uh, they have their upcoming event, Summer Sun Princess. Unfortunately, uh, there has been complications. Uh, Willow Nightingale uh, was unable to obtain a visa in time. So she will not be able to go to Tokyo Shi Pro to make her debut. However, uh, they, according to Tokyo Shi Pro, they are postponing her match with Miyu Wanabe. But however, 
uh, Miyu Watanabe is scheduled to be there. So they found her a suitable replacement and it's going to be Ryu Mizunami. So I'm sure fans will be disappointed, but they are planning to reschedule to have that match back. They said that they'll do everything as possible to get Wilton Nightingale into Tokyo Ocean Pro. I think they really want her to be there. So I'm sure we all will be excited. Now, for all you Stardom fans out there, you probably heard about the Stardom in Showcase. Now, I did mention there is that three-way match between the Grim Reaper versus uh, Starlight Kid versus Saikama Matani. Well, it was announced with another match. Now, this one was a very interesting. Now, I did not see some of the recent uh, Stardom uh, events uh, that took place on July 2nd and on July 2nd. Yeah, but anyway, there was a post-match of comments that was took place with Queen Quest after they defeated, um, I forgot who it was. Um, Azumi was confronted by Koguma, and then Tam Nakano joined in the conversation, and then they tried to run, and of course, Momo Wananabe got involved. So basically, they were trying to set up some sort of interesting match. Now, I mentioned this before, Koguma and Azumi are two of the craziest wrestlers in stardom, because, of course, we just saw that infamous steel cage match that they got themselves into, but there's going to be a Anywhere's Falls match for in the four-way. It's going to be Azumi versus Koguma versus Tam Nakano versus Momo Watanabe. So this is going to be one interesting matchup. I can't wait to see how this is going to be insane. So I think that's pretty much it. What we got with the news update. So I believe it's time for Calling a Day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. As you know, I mentioned there's more New Japan Road coming up. And, of course, uh, Dark Elevation. Now, I have missed um, two events from GCW, so I'll be catching up with those soon enough. Um, but we'll see how we go from there. I know there's still some events from last month I haven't seen. I'll catch up with those as much as po possible. So, uh, as you know, I made the decision. I'm not going to do anything from May. I'm going to do things from, let's say, a month uh, after. So, basically, a month before, actually. But we'll see what happens. I haven't decided what I'm gonna else I'm going to put other than those two. But we'll see. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.